This is a video on how to create a work plane that is tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane. So we're going to go up to our um, part pull down menu and I'm just going to go into part. And remember I could go to sketch and draw a circle, but I'm going to choose to use the cylinder command. So we're going to click on cylinder and I want to click on my XY plane. And I'm going to click, and I don't really worry about dimensions too much in teaching about work planes. I'm just going to hit 1 and hit enter, and let's make it a distance of 1. So we have a diameter of 1 and an extruded distance of 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our origin folder and click on the arrow next to origin, and let's just use this work plane for now. So a YZ plane. So I'm going to right-click on the YZ plane, and let's go down to visibility. You don't necessarily have to do that. I'll show you how to get by with, uh, without doing that um, in another example later. So. We're going to click on the word plane, and down here you're going to notice all these different ways to use work planes. So there's one down here that says tangent to surface through an edge, tangent to surface through a point. There's one down here that says tangent to surface and parallel to plane. We're going to click on that. And the plane I want this to be parallel to is this object, so I'm going to click, and I'm going to come over here on the side like I'm clicking on an edge, and I'm going to click. And I now have myself a work plane that lines up perfectly tangent to that side it does not go through it. It just touches it at one point. So one thing that's kind of neat about doing this is let's go over here to our origin folder and turn off the visibility. I right click and go down to visibility and I'm going to go to my pencil and I'm going to click on that plane I created. Now what if I want to find the center of this object? I can go to project geometry and I can click inside the object and you're going to see it gave me the vertical lines on the side. If I want the top ones I can click and click underneath and look at what that did. I can come up here and use my view cube and I can now see that it's projected these lines onto the object. So I have the full height and width of the object. So that's one way to teach your students about how when you're doing a multi-view drawing of cylinders, if this was like a side view or even the front view, it looks just like a rectangle or a square. So when I flip back around here, I'm going to come up here to circle and I'm going to drag along here. I'm not going to click. I'm not clicking. And I'm just going to reference that point. So I'm not clicking. I can see that black dotted line. And I can come right down here until it snaps to the axis. And I can click and drag for myself a circle. Let's go to Finish Sketch. And let's go to Extrude. We're going to click inside that object, flip its direction, go to All. And you might be wondering, how in the world do you go about putting a hole through the side of a cylinder? And that's how you go about doing it. I'm going to right click and say, OK. I'm going to turn off the visibility of that work plane. So again, we can see that part right there, but we have it um, put through that object like this. So we have the hole that is put through the side of the cylinder. Now let's, let me show you how we can go about doing this without turning on the visibility of the work plane. So the first thing I did earlier was I right clicked and I went down to visibility. You do not have to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to go to plane and we're going to go down to tangent to surface and parallel to plane. Click on that. And then I can just come right over here and I'm just going to tap on that XZ plane and I can come right out here and tap on the edge and I automatically get that object. I get that work plane right there. I don't have to come over here and turn on the work planes and turn them off. I can just click on that plane function down here, tangent to surface and parallel to plane, tap on the plane over here and then I automatically get for myself a nice object right here. So let's go to our pencil. Let's go to the side right here and we can go ahead and click on line right here I'm going to drag up and I knew it was 0.5 so let's talk about how to use this X and Y so I'm gonna hit tab and I know on the X we're going 0 and on the Y we're gonna do 0.5 you know we extruded this up a distance of 1 I can just go in 0.5 and I don't have to do the geometric constraints and as I drag out if I want the diameter to be the same notice how it's referencing the bottom of the object I can just kind of click right there let's go to finish sketch let's go to extrude cut way through the object and say okay. We have to turn off the visibility of that work plane. And we now have for ourselves a nice little object with all these holes cut in it. So just while I'm here and we're doing this, um, let's go ahead and put an axis down through the middle of this object. Now to do what we're about to do, you don't have to put an axis down the middle, but to learn about work axes, let's go ahead and do that. So up here in the top right next to plane, we can click on work axis. And let's click on work axis and we can come down here and click on the outside diameter of the object and you're going to see this thing that looks kind of like a hard piece of spaghetti going down through the object. So that's our axis. So one thing that's cool about patterning objects is we can come up to circular pattern and I'm going to click on that. And it's going to ask me what feature are we patterning and I'm going to use that extrusion 3 that we just did. Then it's going to ask me for an axis. I'm going to click on work axis. And what we've asked for is for six of these objects to be placed. Now 
don't know if you can notice here, but it's kind of flipping this around. We can say at a certain degree, we're just going to keep this where it is. I don't really care what this looks like. The point is to learn about how to use circular pattern. So they're going to place six over a 360 degree diameter. Notice that we we clicked on a feature. The feature was the hole we cut in the side, and the axis was this axis, and I'm going to say OK. And as I rotate around, you can see we've got all these holes going into that object, and that's a way to go about patterning your object. I can right-click and go to OK. I can right-click and turn off the visibility of that axis. Now, we could have done this. I'm going to right-click on the pattern and delete it. You don't necessarily have to use a work axis to do a circular pattern. You can do this. You can go to Circular Pattern, choose Extrusion 3 as your feature, click on your red arrow for rotation axis, and I can just click on the side of the object. And it's automatically going to choose the center of the cylinder as a center line. Now that's easy to do when you have a set, uh, when you have a cylinder because you do have a center axis it's rotating around. So once we're done with that, we can say okay, and you're going to also go right back to where we were as far as circular patterning and creating an axis. So one of the ways to tell about how anybody ever did anything is to go to your browser bar and just look through the first things that we did. So the first thing we did was we extruded a cylinder, we created a work plane that was tangent, we cut through the object, we put another work plane tangent, we cut through that object, we created an axis and we circular patterned. Your browser bar tells the history and gives you a bread trail, if you will, or a, you know, like, like a bread trail of what you did and how you did it. So I hope this was beneficial to you in learning how to make a uh, work plane tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane, and also for how to do some axes work and some circular patterning.